What is going on guys, welcome to the Mark Flyer and welcome to another episode of the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial with me today and today we are going to discuss on the iOS approach procedure I will try my best to do as quick as possible and in the meantime provide as much info as I can over here so this one will be based on my real life uh, flying knowledge so I hope you can learn something from the video so that you can apply it to your home simulator as well so before we get into the uh, simulator session today, without further ado, let me just uh, quickly go through on the approach chart we have over here, which is the Hong Kong iOS runway 25 right. Uh, we have our chart index number is correct. And then the date is updated as well. So we are just going to uh, go through what is important over here. We have our localizer frequency, India Tango Fox Romeo, 110.9. And final approach course is 254, which is same as Birdie. Uh, runway track for runway 25 right over Hong Kong and for the glide slope we have to pass 4 miles in the Tango Fox Trot Romeo at 1290 feet the bracket one will be the height we've referred to the runway uh, elevation over here so as you can see our runway elevation for runway 25 right will be 22 feet and then uh, since we are not going to do any low visibility operation today so our minima we are going to stick to the cat 1 minima and airport elevation will be 28 feet so for the approach today you can see i would say this one is a uh, quite a simple and complicated approach uh, over hong kong here and what i mean by that is that for the profile it seems to be very straightforward very simple we're crossing tango delta tong long uh, between 8000 to 6000 feet they have to proceed to position toro before commence a left turn to river where you are going to establish on the uh, localizer as well as the glide slope. So we are going to descend to 4005 by position river. Then we will continue descend via the glide slope of 3 degree. And then the total line you see here, that one will be the misapproach procedure for runway 25 right. And for the complicated part will be the speed control as Hong Kong is famous for its busy traffic. So you can expect to strictly adhere to the speed control published in the chart or by the ATC itself. So if we follow the chart as per today, we are going to cross uh, 15 miles India Tango Fox Trot Romeo or position river here at uh, 4,500 feet and then at a speed of 180 knots. So for our aircraft, it should be at least on configuration flaps 1 and then to maintain 180 knots until 7 miles India Tango Fox Trot Romeo. Thereafter, we are going to cross 4 miles India Tango Fox Trot Romeo between 150 to 160 knots. And based on our aircraft performance today, I think our approach speed should be somewhere around 132 knots. So we are expected to cross 4 miles at an altitude of 1290 feet according to the chart. So we have a 300 feet, around 300 feet of buffer to reduce our speed of 18 knots. So with our stabilized criteria being at 1000 feet above mean sea level, it might seem a bit tight for you to reduce 18 knots of uh, speed here so what you can do is we are going to uh, adhere to the speed control as much as we can so maybe somewhere around um, 4.5 to 5 miles i'm going to start reducing our speed since we're going to do a flat full landing so at flat full we are unable to use the speed brake inside the real airbus 320 so anyway to advise approach control if plan finals approach speed is below 125 knots which we are uh, well above that for our case and then proceed on we have our yep black stroke mentioned earlier on three degree and then for the approach lighting we have this approach lighting system with a sequence flashing light category 2 installed in Romy 25 right puppy on the right side and then for the minima we are going to stick to the cat 1 ILS minima and we have two category over here one is being for the mixed approach climb gradient minimum 5% up to 5,000 feet. Another one will be 2.5%. So with the Airbus 320 NEO, generally we can meet with at least 5% uh, of climb gradient, approach climb gradient of flap 3, uh, even with a single engine operation. So another thing to take note is, since our elevation is only uh, close to 30 feet, and then we don't have any overweight landing procedure for today. So I believe for 5% for our aircraft today shouldn't be a problem. So we are going to stick with the 222 decision altitude over here. And for the misapproach, I don't think we are going to go 
through the MIS approach procedure since our main focus today will be the ILS approach. So 4000 feet here will be the altitude we are going to set on the FCU once we capture the glide slope later on. And lastly, we have a minimum sector altitude of 4300 feet for our approach today. And then the one is being the highest among all the minimum sector altitude over here. So a few notes to highlight here. For this approach, we require distance measuring equipment. Uh, if unable to receive the DME signal from India Tango Photo Romeo to advise on ATC, and then for the our localizer is unusable beyond 20 nautical miles below 5,500 feet from 4 degree right of course, and then light slope signal will be unusable as well beyond 6 degree right of course. This one I believe is mainly due to the terrain as you can see on our right side of the approach path. Alright guys, so for now at least you have an idea how does the approach for the Hong Kong runway 25 right looks like. So with that being said, let's proceed into the aircraft. Alright guys, so now we are inside the aircraft and our exact location is we are about 3 miles to position uh, Tango Delta and then maintaining 7000 feet, speed selected 220 knots here and we just have a quick go through on the setup here in the flight management system. So we have the uh, arrival set for runway 25 right uh, via Tango Delta and then and over the performance patch you have the approach phase being activated and all the weather information for Hong Kong has been inserted. So for our arrival onto runway 25 right we can expect quite a strong headwind uh, as stated on the 80s earlier on. So we can expect a wind of uh, 270 diagonal 20 knots. And then approach speed mentioned earlier on 132 knots seems a bit low for our uh, based on our weight today. So that's all you need to set up for the uh, flight management system. And then let's go to the glare shield. You have to turn on your flight director, and then your LS push button have to on as well on both sides so that you can have a look on your primary flight display. You have this uh, dotted vertical line, and then. For the uh, lateral as well. This one will be your localizer signal and then this one is the glide slope signal. So the diamond here you can see is our glide slope diamond and for the lateral part it will be localizer diamond. So you can see the localizer is a half diamond shape here as we are currently on the left side of the localizer signal. And then you have your identification India Tango Fox or Romeo with frequency 110.9 and we are about 2-0 track miles from the runway and another thing to check is your on your navigation display you have your ILS runway 25 right being set correctly over here so of course we are now on autopilot 1 and auto trust I will leave it on throughout the approach today and then auto brake we will leave it to low and we are going for a config full landing for today so that's it, let's commence the approach. Just another thing to take note here, for the simulator, the aircraft tend to slightly off the flight path. As you can see now, it commenced the turn quite early, before even reaching uh, Tango Delta. So for now, let's just maintain. 7,000 feet and after passing Tango Delta, I'm going to select to 4,500 feet on the FCU. So 4,500 feet is being selected and let me just open descent. So we cross either open descent 4,500 feet on the uh, FMA and we find this speed. And then you can manage your speed. Yeah, approach phase is already activated and then your approach speed 132 is being shown here. And as you can see here, the aircraft is uh, prioritized on the speed rather than the altitude. So we are going to increase your rate of descent by extending your speed brake over here. So you can see uh, speed brake is being extended so that the aircraft will increase the rate of descent as well as decelerate at the same time. So it's a quite useful tool over here. 
So our requirement as per the chart, we're going to reach river at 4,500 feet with our speed of uh, 180 knots. So let's see if we can do that. So from here, our current position to reach river will be somewhere around uh, 5 nautical miles on a 3 degree slope. So you can expect 5 times 3, make it 1,005. So by now, your altitude should be somewhere around 6,000. Uh, yep, 6,000. But of course, we have to take into consideration of the speed we're going to reduce from, uh, I would say somewhere around two, 203 knots to reduce to 180 knots. So you require around 2 nautical miles for the deceleration as well. So I think we are able to do that as our altitude is slowly coming in. So let us get our altitude 4,500 feet first, then we will uh, reduce our speed to 180 knots. So we will speed our star and make home for flat one. And if you want to be precise, what you can do is, you can select your speed to 180 knots. Speed 180 knots being selected on, on the FCU. And we are around 1.5 miles to position river. I believe the aircraft is start turning early again towards river. And altitude coming in, you have speed 180 knots as well. Now you can retract your speed brake. And then you have you can see your glide stop is slowly coming in. And aircraft is turning to its final course. So what we can do now is on the approach. We have glide slope do, lock start, cat three sinker. And normally in real life we are going to uh, arm both the autopilot. However, I don't think it's working here. Otherwise, it will be showing Cat 3 Dual and Autopilot 1 plus 2. So, lock star meaning the aircraft just uh, capture on the uh, localizer. So, we have GS on the FMA. And then, select your go around altitude. 4000 feet. 4,000 feet go around to being selected on the FCU and then you have lock. There you go. Lock meaning the aircraft is fully captured on the uh, IRS signal. So we are established on IRS runway 25 right. As you can see now, once we establish on the IRS, the aircraft uh, is on a 3 degree descent path, hence with the increasing of speed. So what we are going to do, deploy our speed brake once again to reduce the speed. You can see the significant increase in speed, especially if you are on a Kelvin approach or a steep angle approach, like for example, London City Airport. So we are going to maintain 180 knots until 7 miles. Usually somewhere around here you may advise your cabin crew to be seated. Our speed slowly coming in, speed brake still deployed. However, if we retract our speed brake now, the speed is going to increase again in a while. There you go, you can see our speed trend slowly increase again. So let me just deploy the speed brake from now. Seven miles coming in, flaps two, and the main just select, uh, select 150 knots for now. Pick 150 knots being selected. And to increase your drag, you may call for gear down.
So next thing to look out for is uh, crossing 4 miles around 150 miles. Go for flap 3 and flap 3. And you may proceed with landing checklist. Landing checklist, cabin crew, advice, auto thrust, speed, auto brake, low, EK memo, standby on the EK memo. We have a uh, cabin and then spoilers. Yep, as you can see now, it's a little bit tight for the for us to meet the stabilized criteria. However, our speed is coming up, and then retract your speed brake and our speed brake. So you have landing, one blue for the cabin. We are going to disregard. So one thousand aircraft is stabilized on the localizer on the guide path, and assume landing clearance granted. We may proceed to land runway two five right. We are going to menu flying now. We have the cat one, and as you can see, our flight director seems to be off a little bit. He's uh, commanding a pitch up maneuver here, which I'm not going to follow. So to avoid confusion, I'm just gonna turn off the FD and then on our track flight path angle or the bird. So there we are turning to visual now. I'm just going to follow the flight slope. Oh. Even though we have 3 red, I'm just going to maintain our my oh. rate of descent for now and shallow a little bit. As you can see, our flight slope diamond slowly coming in. It's getting more sensitive as you get closer to the runway. Use our rate of descent. speed less than 40 knots speed is good maybe can be one bit and that's it guys this is how you do an IRS approach here in Hong Kong and in other airport as well this is just a guideline for you so in conclusion it's basically all about your aircraft energy management as well as your profile management you have to anticipate earlier when to configure your aircraft especially if you are in a tailwind condition or you can expect a steep approach as mentioned earlier on otherwise you might find that the aircraft is very hard to uh, decelerate and slow down and of course there might be some other factor that is affecting our approach uh, profile management as well when it comes to aircraft type you can be the 320neo or the 320c or the current engine option or you can have the Charlotte or non Charlotte Airbus 320 as well. It might induce a bit of difference, especially if you are in a approach and then you have to configure early. So that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something from my video today. And if you have any suggestion on the current video or the upcoming video, do leave a comment down below. And I shall see you guys in the next video very soon.